Welcome to the MySO STEM session for December. I'm Jenny Kopak, CEO of Science Olympiad, and I'm glad you're tuning in to learn more about cybersecurity. It's that time of year when we all take advantage of Black Friday and Cyber Monday shopping deals, so online privacy and data security is top of mind. Every time you make a transaction, you're giving up private information like your name, password, and credit card number, which travel through our data systems at lightning speed. Thankfully, there are cyber ninjas working in data centers across the globe to keep our information safe and secure. Cybersecurity even affects your schools, including your report cards, homework, and grading systems. Last month, a district in Indiana had to cancel school due to a network compromise that caused an outage. If you've ever seen the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you might know who could be responsible. This month for MySO, we've tied data protection and privacy into the lesson plan and STEM quizzes. And you'll also see alignment in our cybersecurity trial event and our Codebusters event for Division B and C, which addresses the fundamentals of encryption and decryption. Ensuring proper access to sensitive data extends beyond personal security all the way to national security, where governments spend billions of dollars creating protective shields to keep citizens and secrets safe and secure. The connections between Science Olympiad and cybersecurity even extend to the halls of Congress, where U.S. Congressman Jason Crow, a former Army Ranger, Bronze Star recipient, and a Science Olympiad alum, serves on several committees dedicated to making the world a safer place. Representative Crow sits on the House Select Committee on Intelligence, the Armed Services Committee, and the Small Business Committee, helping create policy on military intelligence, cybersecurity, operations, and counterterrorism. Our speaker this month is Marianne Kramer. Her resume spans several positions throughout the intelligence community, from technology transition to infrastructure to advanced research projects. Marianne is also a prolific volunteer with Science Olympiad at the state and national levels as a state director, event supervisor, and now executive director of Maryland's Science Olympiad board. Let's hear from Marianne about her fascinating career path to cybersecurity. Within the federal government organization where I work, we study pictures of the earth combined with knowledge of science and geography to make important decisions about an entire range of issues that are of interest to the government while helping people in need. In my profession, we refer to any information about places on the earth as geospatial information. Geospatial information is often what we see when we are looking at a traditional map, but nowadays much of it is found through looking at different types of satellite images. With advances in computing power and the shift from manual imagery to digital imagery, a great deal of geographic data is analyzed using geographic information systems, often referred to as GIS. For those of you who are watching this and have participated in Science Olympiad, if, for example, you participated in Rhodes Scholar for Division B or in Remote Sensing for Division C, you will have worked with geospatial information in some form. Although my agency uses geospatial information in my job, I help make sure that we have techniques, training, and tools that allow the government to create the best geospatial information possible to help those first responders, service members, and others make informed decisions in the best interest of our country. Collectively, we refer, we refer to this as tradecraft, and it is vital that we employ excellent tradecraft so our geospatial information is the best quality possible. I studied applied geography in graduate school at Binghamton University in New York. At school, I was intrigued by the practice of air photo interpretation, which involves measuring information in images of the ground to identify facts about those images, such as the length of a bridge or the width of a building. This is also knowledge I've used as an event supervisor for Rhodes Scholar. I was 
so fascinated by the opportunities to use computers to look at remote sensing data to interpret patterns such as the effects of climate on agriculture. Some of the skills I learned in college helped me create tests for Division C remote sensing event, or even as background for geologic mapping. I've also coached and been an event supervisor for Dynamic Planet, where I have used both satellite imagery as well as mapping data as a part of that event. When I started working for the government, I was involved in more hands-on tasks, such as building databases containing information about the surface of the land over selected areas of the earth. Over the years, I became involved in efforts to modernize and automate geospatial information collection and map creation. Like many other professions, geospatial information relies increasingly on computing power to process the data we use to create maps both paper and digital ones. This interest in modernization has propelled many of my career choices, including a stint working in research and development to solve some of our country's hardest problems using geospatial techniques, followed by a job working to transition solutions into more mainstream systems. Today, I focus on ways to improve the quality of the analysis of geospatial information. I pay attention to issues in the world and help our workforce apply tradecraft in ways that provide the best value for the country. My days involve technical exchanges with analysts and a lot of problem solving skills. I try to anticipate issues and work on solutions ahead of time. As a public servant, I find working for the government one of the most compelling roles I can imagine. Each day, I leave work with a strong sense of contentment that my efforts made a difference. That is extremely satisfying. I am always amazed by the range of problems that good, accurate geospatial information can help to solve. When it comes to geospatial information, there are always events somewhere in the world where our expertise is needed. Safety of life and homeland missions remain top priorities with a long history of support dating back to major natural disasters such as Hurricane Katrina, as well as wildfires and earthquakes. I work with other STEM professionals on a daily basis, both within my agency, with other government agencies, and even internationally. Although my background is cartography, remote sensing, and geospatial analysis, the business of geospatial information needs a broad range of scientists and engineers to cover a variety of technical areas. This is my SO session is focused on cybersecurity. I will point out that geospatial information today is heavily dependent on a modern web architecture to make data available to our range of consumers, first responders, military support members, and government executives. One of the areas where the federal government has experienced significant growth is in coding and data science. C++, Java, and Python language experience are highly prized skills, but so is the need to be web savvy. Understanding web page construction, JavaScript, HTML, TCP IP knowledge, and a good understanding of the basic principles of cybersecurity. The government is a big target and quite a temptation for hackers. Since so much geospatial information is digitally rendered and stored, data science and the ability to develop algorithms to evaluate data has become a significant part of what we do. I am amazed to see the widespread use of computers and coding to create better geospatial information. Using computers to process digital images was such a new idea when I was at school, and now it has evolved to an exquisite science that included artificial intelligence and machine learning where computer vision has evolved to dominate much of my profession. When I started working in the government, being a great cartographer was a prized skill. Nowadays, being an excellent coder is paramount. My children were in Science Olympiad in middle school and high school in Ohio, and I saw how much they learned and also how much they enjoyed the team spirit and competition. I went to nationals as a volunteer when their team qualified to compete. 
From there, I became an event coach with my local school, as well as a local and then state event supervisor. Personally, once I saw how much value ESO brought to students, it is impossible not to be inspired and moved by this program. Currently, I am the executive director for Maryland Science Olympiad and a member of the Arbitration Committee for Nationals for the past two years. Now, there are so many, so I'll just mention a few. Attending nationals in 2009 and 2010 when my local Ohio teams were competing and the immense feeling of happiness to see them succeed. Being part of the committee that hosted nationals at Wright State University in 2013 and lining up the students for the Parade of States. More recently, my gratitude at the dedicated volunteers in Maryland who have been key to the expansion of Science Olympiad across that state, so much so that Maryland was able to have two Division B teams compete at nationals these past two years. And finally, I am so gratified to see former Science Olympians on LinkedIn and the amazing adventures many of them have chosen for their career paths. STEM skills, especially practiced in SO, involve thinking on your feet and logic, which you practice in your competitions being comfortable and able to process technical details in an environment of uncertainty is incredibly valuable. If you have an interest in STEM, by all means, follow your interest. Explore your passion in STEM. Ultimately, it will lead you to a great satisfaction in your career. Thank you so much for listening this month. We hope you'll visit the Science Olympiad website for resources and educational materials to support a career path of your choice. 